hey, good morning. Um, one thing in the alpaca businesses and some other livestock businesses, there's a great network of people to call when you have problems, when you have something you're not sure what to do about. And um, so a lot of people in the livestock business, and especially in the alpaca business, have mentors. So um, I've mentored a few people, and a lot of times I'll get a call and they'll say, I don't know what to do about this. Um, and then I need to ask them some questions. So just to give you a little uh, bit of an overview on what you might information you might want to gather first before you give your mentor a call. So uh, as an example, I said I had somebody call me the other night and they said so-and-so didn't come in to eat their feed, uh, which is a real clue for those of us raising alpacas that it might be normal, but it might not. But this was the kind of information, you know, you would want to know off the hand, and, and that is just to go out and check them uh, and see. It might be something normal, it might not be. So um, of course, I asked her how long, if it was an adult, all that kind of history taking. But as far as what you physically want to check on your alpaca, uh, if you think something wrong, as a minimum, is first thing is, and we're always by ourselves, so um, you always have to think how you're going to do this completely by yourself. Is So a lot of times, I'll just tie them in a quick slip knot kind of short to a railing so that I can check them out. And then one of the first things I do is I check what's called a famacha, which is where we pull the bottom lid down and pop on the eye. And you see that third eyelid pop out. You don't want to hold it very long, but you can get an idea on how pink they are. And um, she's not as pink as I'd like her to be, um, uh, but you can get a good idea yeah, of, uh, what their uh, blood count might be like by looking at that. Next thing I do is I check their, I check their mouth and I check their gums to see if they're tacky. And that just means sticky. So, Calista, relax. So, um, so just checking that top gum to see if it feels sticky to you. Hers does not. And then I usually move to doing a temperature check. Uh, I try to do the eyes and the temperature early on because if they get riled up, uh, that could pump their blood faster and their eyes could look pinker. Same with their temp. Uh, if their temp was abnormally low, uh, you want to check it, you know, pretty early on um, just so you get an accurate reading. So, a um, little saliva and then check her temp. And you can see she's being pretty good about this, um, checking her temp. Grab a hold of the, a good hold of the tail at the base and just hold on to it until it's done. And there's your temp. Then from there, since I'm already back here, I'll just go ahead and pull a fecal sample. Um, do this for two reasons. One, just to see visibly what it looks like. She makes a great table too, you know? Um, but just to visibly see what it looks like. So again, just pull your tail up. Two fingers for a And pull out some feces. And then I, I visibly look at it to see what it looks like, if it's mucousy, if it's pelleted, and if it's dry. Uh, you know, if it's dry, then I get a sense of their hydration as well. Uh, the third way you can get a sense of their hydration is if you see them urinate a long stream. Um, that'll tell you if they're uh, hydrated as well. So three, three hints for hydration, tacky gums, look at the feces, and watch and see if they urinate a good stream, not just a trickle. So, and then last, I'm just going to check her for bowel sounds. It's so important in ruminants. Ruminants have to be chewing cud. Uh, if they don't, they can get into a lot of trouble. So um, if you can, you want to check, uh, check bowel sounds, and you can get a stethoscope. Sometimes it's harder, the cheaper t stethoscopes to actually listen, but you can get a stethoscope, and all you're going to do, practice on yourself first, put it on your belly, hold it down here, listen for a good minute, and you're going to listen to your stomach growling, much like what our stomach growls when we're hungry. And that's what you're going to listen for. So, you know, you don't have to be able to grade them as far as good bowel sounds or how many per minute or anything like that. Just get a sense. 
and she's got bowel sounds. The other way you know is if they have bowel sounds is if um, they're chewing cud, because if they're chewing cud, that means they more than likely have bowel sounds. They have an active rumen, uh, or they're trying to get their rumen going. So when you watch them to see if they're chewing cud, however, make sure that you actually see that shifting back and forth of their cud, the um, rumen contents, if you can, coming up that esophagus, which is going to be on their left side. Um, I know a lot of times alpacas will be out there just going back and forth, and we think they're chewing cud, and they're really not. They're just kind of making movements. So those are the things as a minimum. If somebody calls me, I get a real good sense of uh, what they're like. Oh, one last thing I almost forgot. An idea of how they're laying, uh, or if they're laying more than the other ones, or whatever. She is what we call cushed totally normally. Legs underneath there, if she would be on her side with her legs kicked out, might get a sense of bloat or something like that. So this is real quick, real brief, but as a minimum, uh, if you can get in the habit of doing these, and you see it only takes a couple minutes, even less time if you're not talking. So, hey, have a great day. Bye. Okay, Calista. Let's go.